I want to thank the awesome folks at Anchor and the PowerCore 2 portable battery for making this epic video possible, keeping all our gear charged up. So this is a Tesla Model X. It's actually my car. I've been driving it for the better part of a year. We've held off on our full review because when the car was delivered to me initially, it was missing a ton of features that ultimately came over the air. So it has the Autopilot 2.0 hardware, but at delivery, none of it was active. In fact, the car could do less and older cars that are equipped with hardware 1.0. When I mentioned Autopilot 2 hardware, essentially it's 12 ultrasonic sensors all around the car and eight cameras that are gonna make this thing eventually, according to Elon Musk, and supposedly by the end of the year, be fully level five autonomous. So this version that I have is a 75D. The 75 means it's got a 75 kilowatt hour battery and the D is dual motor, so essentially it's all wheel drive. It's got an advertised range of about 237 miles, but I've never once gotten close to that. When I do almost a full 100% charge, generally shows about 220 miles. And that's not actual range. It's gonna depend on your driving. So you gotta really use the car to see how many miles you can actually get. Tesla doesn't recommend you charge the car up to 100%. They recommend about 80%, so it sort of cycles through the cells. Uh, it's gonna be a zero to 60 time of about four and a half-ish seconds. I've actually clocked it and that's where I got. So it's not a slow car uh, for being something this big. You can option it up. Tesla sort of changed their battery pack size. You can get a 100D. It's gonna give you a faster D to 60 and up your range just under 300. And if you want the fastest Model X available, you can get a P100D, which will bring you down to about four seconds or under four seconds and keep that almost 300 mile range. But of course, things start to get super expensive from there. So driving an EV is different for some people. It's obviously no gas. And a lot of the questions that I get is, what is it gonna cost to actually fill up or charge the car? So I charge mine off hours here in Southern California. So it's about 10 to 11 cents per kilowatt. So from zero to a full 75 kilowatt hour charge, it's gonna cost me about $8.25. So to go 200-ish miles, it's about $8 for me. So way less what you get with gas. Charging up the Model X is pretty easy. I installed a 240 outlet at home when I just used the standard charge that came with the car. Um, it'll charge generally about 20-ish miles an hour. You can get bigger, faster charges, but for me, that was totally fine. It's like a cell phone. I plug in it at night and I wake up in the morning and it's got a full charge. I never have to deal with gas stations or any sort of issue at all. Uh, but if you need faster charging, you need sort of more regular charging, Tesla's got superchargers all over the US. In fact, they're expanding. I think they're gonna go like 2X versus what they have right now. I uh, can charge your car up to 80% in about 30 minutes and it is insanely fast. It's not quite as fast as gas yet, um, but it works and the stations are almost everywhere. And actually inside the car will tell you if there's a stall available. The big story with the Model X though is the doors. Uh, the Falco wing doors, people love them or hate them. I'm kind of in the middle. I certainly liked them when I got the car. It was sort of the big appeal of a car like this. In practical use, they work very well in certain situations. In others, they are definitely an inconvenience. Um, they used to be really slow when the car first shipped. It would take almost four seconds for the doors to open up. Uh, but as software updates have come, the doors have opened up way faster. And I will say, even in tight spots, I have never once hit another car. The car's been really good about detecting overhead beams, never hit overhead beams either. Putting kids in and out of the car, it's been really nice to have those. I don't have to sort of twist my back to get kids in and sort of walk up to the car and you can just put the kids straight in. So the Falco wing doors have held up really well. I haven't had any issues with them, but my passenger door still has a little bit of a creak in it. You can, you can hear what it sounds like. It doesn't affect the performance at all or detecting anything. It just sort of is a bit of an annoyance. So aside from the Falcon doors, uh, another highlight feature of the Model X is it's kind of helicopter type windshield. And when you sit in the car, it's unlike any other experience. You can look up and you can sort of see straight up. It's different than a panoramic roof because you don't have a sort of cross beam, it's just sort of glass uh, all the way up. And it sounds awesome on paper. Uh, they put some sort of tint on it to try and block out the sun. And they claim it blocks 90 something percent of UV rays and the heat, but it gets really hot. So Tesla does some things really well. They are innovators in technology, but some stuff is just kind of baffling to me why they would do it. The visors on the Model X are weird. It's like a strange magnetic dance. You gotta pull it, and snap it, and then pull it down again uh, to get the visor to come out. And if you want to start to block the sun, because all you got is freaking glass over you, 
Uh, it's strange to do, and it's so low profile, it doesn't do much. So you can configure the car with different seating arrangements. You can get a five-seater, a six-seater, a seven-seater. I opted for the six-seater. I like sort of that alley in the middle. Um, and it's gonna give you two captain's chairs in the second row and then two seats in the third row. You get a ton of storage back there. There's sort of a hidden compartment in the back to sort of store stuff, kind of like a minivan. Kind of looks like a minivan anyway. Then you've got the front trunk to storing, for storing some kind of extra stuff that you might need. So I opted for the white interior. And when I first did our video on the Model X, I got a lot of like, what's wrong with you? You got kids, why would you go white? So according to Elon Musk, the vegan material that goes into this is the most durable of all the Tesla materials. That includes their leathers and synthetics. So I was a bit dubious to have white in my car, especially someone who wears jeans every day. So going on now a year, I've had ketchup spill on those seats. Uh, I've had coffee spill on those seats. Uh, and I've had other gross stuff that kids tend to eat on those seats. And I can say the seats look almost brand new. So if you're nervous about getting the white, actually seems to be really good, even more durable than some of the leather options that Tesla offers. So I optioned my car with the air suspension. That means you can sort of raise it up or down. You can sort of do it manually. It'll remember locations. So if you like to raise it up when you go to work, it'll do that automatically when you get there. It's a really cool feature that the car has. The main reason I got it, I thought it was gonna make the ride seem a little smooth. It can sort of adjust itself as it goes over bumps. Uh, it turns out the suspension on this thing is tuned like a sports car. You feel every single bump in the road. It might not matter if you've got air suspension or not. Um, I was kind of disappointed with the suspension that Tesla put in here. It's a way harsher ride than I would have wanted from a big family hauling SUV. If I had a Model S, maybe I'd expect it. If I had even a Model 3 or a Roadster, you kind of want that hard suspension. You want to feel the bumps in the road. But a car like this, that was not a welcome surprise. The biggest reason that I got the Model X was autopilot. I loved what it could do and I loved the promise of what it was ultimately going to be able to do. But as it stands right now, it's like level two-ish autonomy. It means it can do some stuff, but you gotta stay aware and stay diligent. But when it's doing its thing in the right conditions, it is awesome. So you give the cruise control stock a little double tap towards you, it's gonna activate autopilot, uh, and it works. You can essentially take your hands off the wheel while paying attention, uh, and the car is going to navigate itself. Uh, it's meant to be used on freeways. It's still technically in beta, uh, but it works in all conditions. It works on turns, it works in the rain. Uh, it works kind of anywhere you want to use it on a freeway. And damn, is it cool. If you want to change lanes, you put the signal up and it'll change lanes for you on its own. It'll make sure things are clear and it'll go. It won't keep going if you keep the signal on though. You got to turn it off and turn it back on again. Uh, and it'll keep speed. Other features are coming, like being able to pass on its own and that kind of stuff. Uh, but as it stands right now, it works really well with a few super dangerous caveats. Uh, if it can't track the lanes, it'll try and track a car in front of it. You'll see the car kind of turn blue uh, on the dash. If lane markings aren't so bright, it'll kind of ping pong around. Uh, it also works on city streets. It's not technically meant for that, but you can turn it on. I mean, you go through a big intersection, if there isn't a car in front of you that it can track, I mean, this thing can almost veer off into another lane. So you gotta stay diligent and you gotta stay awake when using autopilot. But in the right conditions, it is absolutely awesome. It can make a long drive or stop and go traffic really kind of usable. So I mentioned that the car is equipped with autopilot 2.0. And as of this filming, it doesn't really do anything that the original autopilot didn't, but it does do a ton of stuff. So first, the car has got a summon feature, which means from your key fob or the mobile app, you can make the car go forward or back without anybody in it, which is insane. Uh, and ultimately, the car is going to use the Autopilot 2.0 software to drive itself. So you could park it in a spot, you could summon it, the car to come to you, it'll pull it out of the spot, it'll turn and drive and go right to where you are. It doesn't work as of yet. Right now it's forward and reverse, but it is really cool. It also can perpendicular park itself or parallel park itself with varying degrees of accuracy. So I love the Model X. For me, it's perfect, but the car itself is far from perfect. Uh, I like what it represents. Uh, I like its sort of electric propulsion. I like that I'm kind of paying to pave the way for cars like the Model 3. I'm okay with all of that. I wish Tesla would have done some other stuff. I wish there was more storage in the car. I wish the visors weren't freaking weird. Uh, I wish autopilot wasn't kind of squirrely at times, but overall in a whole package, the car has been incredible. And Tesla delivered on their promise. 
The Falco wing doors are awesome, they're usable, they're not necessary, but I'm glad that they're here. If anything, they're kind of a conversation starter. I'm really happy with the Model X. It was a three year lease for me and I'm gonna be sad to give it away uh, in two more years. Perhaps my next car will be a Model 3, a Model Y, or even another one of these guys. But I think Tesla hit a home run with this car. I know it's not gonna win any beauty awards, but for a functional family hauler or a car that has a lot of storage capacity, it's really good. In fact, it's probably my favorite car that I've ever had. So much to my surprise, the ultra white seats held up. The Falco wing doors have been usable with no issues. The car is still plenty fast enough and I love it. It's not a perfect car, but it's a perfect car for me. This video has been a year in the making. We wanted to show the Model X when it got to its full capacity, or at least on par with what Autopilot 1.0 could do. It's only gonna get better from here. We should have full autonomy coming in the next two years, hopefully, uh, if you subscribe to Elon's promises. Uh, more features should be coming over the next few years. This car will drive itself, this car will park itself, this car will become even more usable than day one. And I love that as a geek, as a car enthusiast, as a tech guy, and as a dad, this car has been the most perfect package that I could imagine. So like pretty much all EVs for hydrogen, the Tesla uses lithium ion cells to give it its juice. It's sort of the same lithium ion cells that something like an external battery pack would use. And I want to take a quick second to thank our friends at Inca for sponsoring this video and making something of this epic proportion happen. Um, I've got their PowerCore 2 here. It's a 10,000 million power battery. Same lithium ion technology that's in the car is in the battery pack like this. So if you want something that's gonna last, you wanna be able to make sure your gadgets can be charged much like you want your car to be charged. If you wanna learn more about Anchor or the battery pack, we'll link to them down below. So what do you guys think? I hope you enjoy. It's a new kind of video for us. We really wanted to make it as epic as possible. Until next time, I'm John Rettinger from Techno Buffalo. Hope you guys enjoyed the review. None of our incredible aerial shots or car tracking shots could have been possible without the incredibly awesome and talented people at Drone Gear. If you want to check out their channel, link here. They also did a BTS video behind the scenes uh, of our shoot day with them. We'll link to that down below.